Welcome back to another video lecture from AP US History. And today we're gonna to be talking about the beginnings of the Cold War. In many ways, I think the Cold War is very misunderstood. And that's because we tend to see it as an ideological battle between communism and capitalism. I would suggest actually it has much more to do with communist authoritarianism and nationalism versus the United States trying to establish a new international marketplace after the Great Depression and World War II. Now, in order to understand this, let's go back to Karl Marx versus communism. Karl Marx actually wrote his big idea about Marxism back in 1867, it was called Das Kapital. And when he wrote that argument, what he was really after was a reform or, or radical revolution of the Industrial Revolution. That was that time period of black lung for children who were going into the mines. People were working 17 to 19 hours a day, men who were earning just $6 a week for all the work that they were doing, unsafe working conditions. He believed there was gonna be a radical revolution that would take place in industrialized states like France, Britain, and Germany. Instead, the communist revolutions took place in places like Russia and China, traditional agricultural countries. Why? Not because of the industrial revolution, but rather in Russia because of World War I and the inability for serfs to gain freedom. In China, due to World War II and the occupation of Japan, and again, the inability for the farmers there to create some kind of amount of freedom. You know, at the end of World War II, the United States set up a conference and the conference was called the Bretton Woods Conference. It took place at New Hampshire. <laughs> kind of a crazy place for that to happen, right? And the guy who led that was John Maynard Keynes. And that's not an accident. John Maynard Keynes led it because he was reorganizing the globe to fit into a new marketplace. A marketplace that was based around two institutions. John Maynard Keynes tried to establish a new global order for economics to have a marketplace. It was set up under two institutions. One was the International Monetary Fund. They set up rules, like for example, you have to lower your inflation, you have to industrialize, and you have to open up to the marketplace. If you do all of these things, there's another institution called the World Bank, and they will give you loans in order to do this. Now, why was the United States doing this? Why was John Maynard Keynes doing this? to reorganize the global economy for an international marketplace so that we wouldn't get into the same problems of the Great Depression, which was assumed to have led to the radical ideas of fascism and communism. So at the very end of World War II, things actually looked like they were going pretty good. The Soviet Union met up with the United States in Berlin and we actually have pictures of soldiers shaking each other's hands basically celebrating the fact that this was the end of World War II. So why? Why do we get into this huge tension? Well, there are a couple of reasons why. For one, the United States ended World War II with the dropping of two atomic bombs in Southeast Asia. Now, there were three big conferences at the end of World War II that are important. The Yalta Conference that divided Eastern Europe from Western Europe. That was presided over by Franklin Roosevelt. Joseph Stalin and Winston Churchill. Then there was the Tehran Conference where Franklin Roosevelt made an agreement with Stalin that the Russians would support us in going after Japan. But then Roosevelt died and Truman became president. At the Potsdam Conference, Truman found out that we had successfully tested our two atomic bombs. And supposedly at that point, he cut off all conversations with Joseph Stalin. Now Stalin and the Russians did invade into Southeast Asia, but at just that time, the United States drops the two atomic bombs over Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Now, we had shared our information with the British about the atomic bombs, but not with Joseph Stalin. But Joseph Stalin knew about the atomic bombs, as we'll talk later, because he had atomic spies in the United States. This created tension immediately between Joseph Stalin and Harry Truman, the United States and Russia at this time. And it started up the fears over the Cold War. That was the first major breaking point for the United States and the Soviet Union. However, I would argue that there's also a second major breaking point as well, and that has to do with our misunderstanding of Joseph Stalin. Now, don't get me wrong, Joseph Stalin was an evil man, and he did horrible atrocities. Just to give one example, he created a man-made famine uh, to a group of farmers in the Ukraine who disagreed with him that led to 20 million deaths in the Ukraine. Joseph Stalin was not misunderstood. But our question is not whether or not Joseph Stalin did horrible things under communism within the Soviet Union. It's what motivated him. And in fact, one of our most important foreign policy advisors at that time was very clear about this. His name was George F. Kennan. And Kennan wrote something called the Long Telegram, in which he warned Truman, he had lived in Russia for some time, and Kennan was an ambassador there, and he warned Truman 
He said, Joseph Stalin's not a Marxist. He's a nationalist. He is trying to enhance Russia's interests. The end of World War II, Russia had lost 10 million people in that war. There was no ability for Joseph Stalin to go out and invade numerous different areas. George F. Kennan warned our best bet was not to see uh, Joseph Stalin as a Marxist who was trying to take over the world, but rather a nationalist who needed to be contained within Russia. And that's exactly what we did. The major policy at that time period was containment, in which Truman had military bases surrounding all of Eastern Europe in order to keep Joseph Stalin where he was at. But this oftentimes led to major misunderstandings. Take, for example, in 1948, what happened in Berlin. So at the end of World War II, we had broken up Germany into Eastern Germany and Western Germany. Western Germany was also broken up into three different areas under British, American, and French leadership. In 1948, Harry Truman decided to reorganize all those areas under one government, one economy, in order to make Western Germany a part of this new Keynesian international marketplace. Problem is, we didn't communicate this with Joseph Stalin. So what did Stalin do? Well, up in Eastern Germany was the capital, Berlin. And just as Germany had been split up into East and West, so was Berlin split up between East and West. Joseph Stalin cut off the road that led from Western Berlin into Western Germany. And the assumption amongst American policymakers was, here goes Stalin, he's about to try to invade. So for the next year, Harry Truman did a very successful effort of doing a Berlin airlift in which we airlifted materials into Western Berlin. That worked very well. But then at the end of that, Truman also established NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. This was meant to create a defensive pact to stop Stalin from ever going into any European country. The message that was sent across was, we believe Stalin was out to take over the world. So how did Stalin respond? He established the Warsaw Pact which was an organization of all the Eastern European countries in order to try to stop the United States from expanding. Now you might be saying, hold on a second. This is not a misunderstanding. We know very clearly that Joseph Stalin was trying to take over areas. For example, he took over the Eastern European countries, right? Kind of, it's actually a little bit more complicated. So it is true, Joseph Stalin promised at that Yalta conference that he would allow Eastern European countries to choose their own destiny. Well, shocker, he didn't allow for that. They had their elections and he overturned them. So wasn't he trying to take over the world? If you understand Russian history, probably not. What Joseph Stalin was doing was establishing what we call buffer states. What does that mean? Joseph Stalin had studied Russian history. He knew Napoleon had tried to invade Russia. Japan invaded and beat Russia back in 1906. Hitler broke his pact and invaded Russia, leading to 10 million deaths. Joseph Stalin was terrified of the possibility of an invasion. And so as a nationalist, he wanted to create buffer states or areas that if the West were to invade, he would know about, he'd be notified, and he could stop that invasion from happening with time. The problem for the United States and the Soviet Union was a misunderstanding of thinking that Joseph Stalin was this Marxist trying to take over the world, when in actuality, he was a Russian nationalist who was trying to make sure that he could maintain his boundaries and his interests. So next comes the year of 1949, and this is the most crucial year, because so many bad things happen in 1949. First off, Chi the Chinese become communist in 1949. That put one third of the globe at that point underneath communism. Also in 1949, the Soviet Union tested its first atomic bomb, something that nobody thought was possible. And they thought for sure, yeah, they would get an atomic bomb, but somewhere deep into the 1950s. And then on top of that, North Korea invaded South Korea. Okay, let's go through each one of those really quickly. So first off, the Chinese had their revolution. And because of that, all of a sudden now, there was a fear that both the Soviet Union and China, both two hugely populous areas were under communism. Then with the, with the testing and the dropping of that new atomic bomb, it became clear that there were actually atomic spies inside of the United States. People like, for example, Alger Hiss, a major advisor to both Roosevelt and to Truman. There was also a couple called Ethel and Julius Rosenberg who were found out to have given over information to the Soviet Union. With all this, there was a deeper fear that communism had actually infected into the United States. Then North Korea invaded South Korea. We know today North Korea actually did go to Stalin and asked if they should do something like this. And Stalin gave them the green light. But why did he do this? He was trying to test Truman. He was trying to see whether or not Truman would really fight back on just this peninsula out in Southeast Asia. And Truman did, and there's a reason why. So at the end of World War II, uh, Soviet Union and the United States had broken up Korea into North Korea and South Korea along what's called the 38th 
parallel. And the Koreans had always wanted to reorganize their country. They just had two different ways they wanted to do it, communism or underneath a democratic government. In 1949, the North Koreans invaded across the 38th parallel and in response, Truman had Douglas MacArthur do what's called the amphibious plan. And that plan, Douglas MacArthur had the United States invade from the West, but also go across the peninsula into the East by sea and to invade and to sandwich the North Koreans, push them all the way back up past the 38th parallel. And actually it worked, except Douglas MacArthur made a huge mistake. He had the United States forces go beyond and be leaders to the South Korean forces. Why does that matter? Because it triggered for China the fear that we might invade into China. In fact, Douglas MacArthur made comments publicly in which he called for that. When Truman told him to stop, Douglas MacArthur went further, saying publicly that Truman was wrong, that we should even use atomic weapons against the Chinese. And at that point, Truman had him fired. Now, the reason why all of this was so important was it lifted even greater fears in the American public that now communism was invading out into Southeast Asia. And especially this was important because of our open door policy with China and because on top of that, our alliance with Japan. So as we come to an end for this beginning of the Cold War, there are a few takeaways I want you guys to consider as we're taking away from this. First off, the Cold War in many ways has been seen as an ideological battle, but I would actually argue that it has much more to do with Russian nationalism and authoritarianism versus the desire to solve the Great Depression by trying to create a new international marketplace centered around Keynesian beliefs. Second major issue that I want us thinking about is the development of atomic weapons and about how atomic weapons were leading into now a new arms race between the Soviet Union and the United States and what kind of tensions those would arise from. And third and finally is this misunderstanding, the misunderstanding about whether or not communism really was about taking over the world or if it had much more to do with different nations having different interests. That's gonna be important when we get back to the Cold War in the 1950s. See you in class.